Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host with me, as always, is... Bonjour, I am Namio, and Elizabeth's vagina is cursed. Yeah. I don't think it's her vagina that's cursed. I think at this point, Elizabeth is just... Ah, No, no, no. She is so easily influenced. No, her vagina... I'm not even talking about her. I'm saying, like, the men she sleeps with, their lives immediately turn to shit. That is why her vagina is cursed. Because Uh no, she, she had sex with AJ for the first time... And the next fucking day, his life turned completely to shit, and he went on a downward spiral that ultimately ended in his death. And now, she has sex with Rick, and they were, like, they were barely post-coital when the police come in and arrest him for a crime he did not commit. Yeah. I'm telling you, her vagina, it is cursed. There is some sort of gypsy curse. Yeah, I, I, is, I, I, I have highly, one. Sci- it's a highly scientific theory. <laughs> I wonder if, 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 like, Nicholas somehow placed a curse on it after, after they initially had their affair and cheated on, their, you know, basically broke Lucky's heart, you know. But um, I just, I just wonder. I just wonder. Is there a cast iron curse in her vagina? Who knows? <sighs> and Rick went through all the trouble to woo her and wine her and dine her and it was really cool we, we like went to the metro court under an assumed name of course because well if they told if he told the metro court that it was rick lansing well the owners don't like him too well for obvious reasons but you know but people being people they're they're a little hesitant to give him a second chance on things I mean, considering some of the stuff he has done i can i can understand but at the same time, it's like, eh, y'all, 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 it's been, been five years, okay, you know, get him a little bit of slack, not too much, but a little bit, oh, god damn, ah, so, how, what, what, what was his crime, his crime was being Julian's backer, his boss, if you will, or his supposed crime. And, uh, and Fluke set him up because he's an easy target and people were already suspecting him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I did think it was interesting that basically, like, he, he said that he drugged Rick and, uh, planted his fingerprints on the gun, uh, and, uh, hid the gun in Rick's hotel room. I uh, like that. That's 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 clever. You gotta give him that. Although, you know, the police. I would say this was a. It's a stupid thing to say because this is the Port Charles Police Department. But you would think the cops would wonder why, if he was guilty, he kept the gun around. Yeah, exactly. That's like uh, that's something you don't do. You yeah, just... if he's if he's really such a brilliant crime boss, then. Uh, you know, why would he do something like that? But again, like I said, this is the Port Charles Police Department, and they suck. So, mm, yeah, but but we do have verification that this Luke, this fake Luke, is indeed fake, which is something everybody and their grandmother has been calling for a while now. Yes. You know, we, we saw fake Luke go in, visit Luke at Miss Cabbage, and everybody was like, no shit, this fucking is. This is fucking how it is. Yes. No fucking shit. <laughs> but I gotta give it to Tony Geary. I, I don't think there was much scenery left by no, the time no. he was done. Like, it was great. That was a great scene. I mean, he was totally believable sitting there taunting himself. Mm-hmm. And, of, and of course, you gotta give props to the camera people and the editors and everything. Yeah. Because you know... They, 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 that they did like the whole split screen thing. Can't even, you, I, I, I admit, I, I looked for like the little telltale split thing or what have you, that you can tell that the screens were split, and no, there was not. 
There was not one. So they did a good job. <laughs> well, they, you don't always have to do split screen. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, they, I, it was it was very well done. They had uh, some excellent camera angles with like the stand-ins. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was very well done. And yeah. So. And of course, left us with more questions, which I admit I was kind of ah, you fucking cop teases. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we're we're still thinking, okay, who is this guy? Because he's obviously been been watching the scene for years. He's been planning this for years. Mm. I mean, we, we've come up with – people have come up with different things. Maybe it was like, oh, it was Jerry Jacks, but no, it wouldn't be Jerry Jacks because if it was Jerry Jacks, number one, he, he's shorter than Luke, I think. And number two, if Jerry Jacks had all of this power and reach, then I don't think he would have needed to hold the city of Port Charles hostage you know, you know, with the water supply just so he could get the cure for polonium poisoning. Yeah. He wouldn't have needed to do that. Uh, I mean, I, there are plenty of other people around there too. I'm, I went from, uh, I went from speculating that it was Lord Ashton, who had a thing for Tracy, who was part of the cartel back in the '90s, to Frank Smith, who not only was Luke's enemy, but also would probably want his territory back from Sonny. At least I think it was his territory for a time. I don't so, remember. I, I saw some speculation that it might be some um, relative of Luke's. I forget the name. Bill Eckert. Um, but saying that uh, they, there was a family similarity there. And a lot of people are saying that it's not a magic mask, that this is someone who got plastic surgery to look like Luke. And that would make a lot more sense. It would. As much as anything in this show makes sense. Um <laughs> Because, again, it's like, okay, if Tracy is having sex with him, like, does she not notice the, you know, the seam where the magic mask is? I mean... Yeah. So, a lookalike, most likely, unless unless the magic mask is just that good, or if he never takes off his shirt. I don't think we've seen anything with, with this fake Luke where he's had his shirt off, especially post-coital. I was going to say, but you would think that Tracy would have, but who yeah. knows? Well, you don't, just because you have sex doesn't necessarily mean you take off your shirt. You, Wouldn't, know. you would think even Tracy would get suspicious if she never saw her husband with his shirt off. Yeah, which that that should alert her to, you know, like, hey, because I'm pretty sure Luke over the years, if he's having sex, his shirt's off. Yeah. So there's got to be something more, or maybe it's more advanced magic makeup skin or something. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we'll we'll find out eventually. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> or maybe they get really kinky and he blindfolds her. Although you know, Tracy did at least like start getting a little suspicious, you know, and you know, asking asking Lulu, you know, what's going on uh, with Luke, uh, he's making, yeah, and that was, that was a hilarious conversation, because she's like, you know, I, I, you know, he just, he disappears, and, and, uh, you know, there's just something going on, and, uh, Lou's like, I thought you said there was something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, no, that, it's not that different, but, 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 yeah, Tracy started to, and then, Lulu spills the proverb, well, supposed beans, and says, "Oh, Dad's just planning your honeymoon." Mm-hmm. And and Tracy, he and Tracy have this thing, and and then fake Luke is like, "Oh shit, now I gotta take this woman on honeymoon." Shit. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, things can still get done. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think I can't remember if we if it happened in the previous show or if it or if it happens this time. But Luke is getting shot. I, I think that was last time. Because for us, it's been about, what, two weeks? Yeah. I, so. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Oh, my life has been weird. Um, but, yeah, I think I think where we left off was uh, when Lucas had been shot and uh, Fluke was trying to, in the in the hospital room, trying to finish the job. And Julian came in and was like, knock that shit off. Yeah, so they trade banter back and forth and... And of course, in the end, Julian ends up, you know, going back to work, but not before taking his his, his paper trail, his fake paper trail, and pinning the whole thing on Rick, yep. just so his boss is in the clear. 
and and of course with with Jordan, you know, her job supposedly done. Because uh, we, because because who? How many people called it? Jordan is actually you know working for the good guys, and she's undercover. Mm-hmm. Uh. And so yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that for a second, because, you know, Anna found out that Jordan is DEA, Mm -hmm. and so, like, um, Anna and, uh, like, the DEA hatch this plan where they pin um, Dante and say that he didn't properly Mirandize uh, Jordan, and therefore, that's what—that's the cover story for why she's being let free. But the the thing is, is that Anna, rather than just you know taking Dante into someplace private and fucking telling him this, starts out by saying, "You didn't properly Mirandize Jordan, so she's going free." And Dante's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Of course I properly Mirandized her." You know, yeah. and they, and they, they, you know, they even, I, I had wondered why they showed him, you know, going through the whole thing when she was arrested. And I'm like, okay, that's why, because they had to show that he did properly Mirandize her. But, you know, it's only after Dante is like, what the crap are you talking about? You know, this is, this is wrong. Uh, then Anna's finally like, oh, by the way, I know that you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, this is just a cover story, and I'm sitting here going, "Why didn't you lead with that?" Yeah, that, that's kind of horrible. It's like, yeah, Anna, Anna, you, you, you're supposed to be a good cop. You're supposed to be. You're the commissioner. Um, don't know what happened with that, but yeah, that's that's kind of for good derp. Uh, and and this was after you know Julian was put away. She and Duke, you know, they they. Had their thing, and then, well, of course, Julian, in exchange for his false information, you know, he, he gets full immunity, so he goes free. Duke's not going to be happy. No, he is not. No. A lot of people are not going to be happy. Except maybe, Chris, like, Alexis or his, his family, you know? Yeah. Well, it's going to, and it's going to be interesting to see if Duke goes back to Sonny. Yeah. But we will we will find out. <laughs> Speaking of Sunny, oh yeah. So I think we, where we had left it was Carly was about to play this the the uh, file for Sunny, and yeah. so she did. And Sunny's like, "I'm gonna kill that bitch." And, <laughs> and so yeah, he he goes down to Puerto Rico and uh, confronts Ava, and I. This is true. Uh, I actually paused the episode and I looked over at my dad and I'm like, the best Hail Mary pass that Ava could throw right now would be to say that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then I started the episode and sure enough. (laughs) Yep. Not only is she pregnant, but she is apparently not lying about it. Yeah. Holy shit. And it's either... (laughs) It's That's either it. Sonny's or Morgan. So she's like, it's either your child or your grandchild, and you can't kill me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, God damn it, but you know what? He can make her life a living hell. Yeah, although, like, and Ava, for her part, like, she is playing it up. Like, because the second, you know, she cements that, you know, he's not going to kill her, she's like, carry my bags and he's sitting there going you fucking murdered the woman i love and you're pulling this shit like and and then you know she talks to carly and she's like i have nine months to convince sunny not to kill me and i'm sitting here going if that's your plan maybe stop being such a cunt because yeah. not only does she do that she threatens to kill carly yeah that's not then, a good idea she does her level best to torpedo any chance Sonny has at getting back with Olivia. And I'm like, yeah. if you, if your intention is to convince Sonny not to kill you, you're doing a really bad job. Very, very bad job. In fact, just, oh, God damn it. And, and for Olivia and Morgan, oh, Lordy, at one point they, they 
kind of met up with each other at the bar. I think it was Morgan getting drunk or whatever. Yeah. And and they talk, and he starts trying to kiss her and make out with her. And she's like, what the fuck, dude? No. I, know. I, was, I was like, oh, God, please don't do that, Olivia. And uh, at least Olivia was like, hell fucking no. It's like, no. No, 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 no. And Morgan's like, but we, but it's the best way to get back at them is if we have sex with each other. And I'm like, I was like, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck, Morgan? No, no. <laughs> Morgan, you're an idiot. But that yeah, is... I mean, yeah, Olivia's hot and all, but come on, there's better ways. If if you're gonna want to get back at your dad, there are better ways of doing that. And you know what? He he's been going through like up and down and up and down. With the whole pregnancy thing, because because at first, and and this is going to be one of those times where I will be squarely on Ava's side, is when Morgan just outright says, "You know what? Have an abortion." He, he basically tells her, "You know, terminate the abortion, get rid of the kid." Yeah. And Ava's like, "Fuck you, my body, my rules," type thing. Yeah, that, and that it's was like, like, and it's like, you know what? I'm on Ava's side for that one. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, you know what, Morgan, you don't get to make that call. No. Especially. Like, ugh, I don't know. It, it's like, Morgan, you're an asshole. Yeah. Just just so much. Oh, of, of course, if if Sonny wanted to help set the record straight, like Morgan was wanting, he was wanting answers. Sonny, for, I, one of the things that really annoys me about Sonny is he is always dodging when he doesn't need to be. Yeah. It's not like you know telling Morgan is going to cause him to be arrested. This is his son, his son who will probably stay quiet, even well, if you ask him, if you let him know directly what the fuck is going on, instead of him finding out later and getting hurt. Well, and I, I'm like, okay, you know what, Sonny, you don't have to tell Morgan that you killed AJ. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell Morgan that either. Because I wouldn't trust him not to run directly to Michael. Right. But you can tell him, a Ava's pregnant, and b she murdered Connie. You can yes. tell Morgan that. You can yes. tell him because I'm sure, and I'm sure Morgan knows that Sonny has killed other people and that he feels guilty about it. I'm, I'm sure that happens somewhere. In the 50-year span of this show. And so he can just say, you know, Ava and I are both murderers. I didn't know that she, you know, the person she murdered was Connie. But, you know, we had this moment where we were both feeling really guilty and stuff just happened. Yeah. Like, you can, you can, you can tell Morgan that. Because the thing that's pissing Morgan off, like, more than the fact that his girlfriend cheated on him with his father, is the fact that he doesn't know why. Yeah, just... Tell him why. You don't have to, you know, like you were saying, you don't have to tell him everything. Just tell him why. Yeah. Why did this happen? We were both murderers, and I was about ready to put a bullet in her head when I found out bitch killed my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be that could be solved in an instant. And, of course, with, with Olivia, too. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. It's like, hey, bitch killed your cousin. Yeah, Duh. I don't know why. I don't know why he hasn't told Olivia. I don't know. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, dude, stop dancing around the topic. Just be direct. I'm sure, I, I, you know, I, I probably need to pay attention to it a little bit more, but I'm willing to bet if the shoe was on the other foot, Sonny would rather whoever's talking to him be direct. I'm willing to bet that. I, I, will, I will have to pay attention a little bit more to that. But if that is true and Sonny doesn't re give that in return well well wait what does that make him it starts with an h oh oh yeah fucking hypocrite yeah oh god damn it and and when i saw the plot point that she was that she's pregnant she pulled out the pregnancy card i'm like god damn it it's like <laughs> really you're gonna go okay okay you go pregnancy right okay it's like god damn it you just you yeah. just, you're just ugh. Of course, my mom was asking, isn't she a little old to be pregnant? But I'm like, you know what? This show doesn't care about biology. It doesn't <laughs> care about sense. If she was 80, there's a chance she could get pregnant if it was, you know, narratively convenient. Yeah. Although I think she is supposed to be, like, maybe in her early 40s at most. 
So she's probably still within that range of being able to conceive. I don't so, know. So realistically, possible. Yeah, yeah, you know, she's, you, you know, you're right. She's probably between like forty and forty-five, based on Kiki's age. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Definitely younger than Alexis. Oh, speaking of Alexis, oh boy, <laughs> she's she's been. Going up, she's she's been dealing with Julian and then Rick being put in jail and and of course Molly, poor Molly. Oh. I know. Uh, and we get back to Elizabeth because you say her vagina is cursed. I I think maybe in addition to that, but she has got to be one of the 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 most easily swayed women I have ever seen on this show. That's true. Because it's like you know AJ is framed for Connie's murder or or. People suspect AJ killed Connie, and then there is like all of this other things happen, and she loses faith in him ra- rather quickly. Even if you go by TV time, which, as we know, several episodes can constitute one day in in in, in universe, she loses faith rather quickly. Same thing with Rick. In fact, I think she lost it quicker than with Rick. Yeah. With Rick, because all it took for her to lose faith was you know newspaper. That was published by fucking Julian Jerome, who yeah. she knows has been a lying, manipulative mob boss. So it's like, duh. Uh, it's just, I mean, you know, you could probably persuade her to go and join a Scientology cult or something. I don't know. Join the Church of Scientology, Elizabeth. Okay, V. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, God damn it. I wonder if Elizabeth is a Scientologist. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, and if and if the Church of Scientology happens to be listening, hi. How you doing? <laughs> you you your views make me powerful. Hmm. <laughs> Tell people about us. Go for it. I, I don't care. Oh, I, I give no shits. It'll get us views. That means people will be listening, and maybe maybe we'll have more people that actually want to hear us. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so after so so uh, along with that, oh oh oh. Can we, can we talk about the depressing part? Or, yeah. Yeah. Because because the 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 shorter week, it wasn't so bad in terms of uh, mood mood whiplash. Uh, that that wasn't so bad. But this this past week, oh my god, you've got all of these scenes. With with Sonny and Ava and Carly and and all of this, all of this, uh, and then Patrick and Sabrina. They named their baby Gabriel, and then Gabriel died. Yeah. There is just no beating around the bush. He he died. Which I I, I was uh I was a little bit surprised by that because uh, I didn't I I wasn't. You know, sure that they were gonna go that dark, but at the same time, it is much more realistic because a baby that is born that premature, like the chances of survival are so small. Yeah, and and to their credit, yeah, there is a lot of artistic license taken when it comes to medical stuff in this show, but that is. One of the more accurate things. Preemies, yeah. they, they have it rough at the beginning. Yeah. Because everything is still developing and still being, I guess for a better term, being cooked, if you yeah. will. So if they have to come out early, then, well. Uh, so, yeah, and then all of that. And, and again, very, very well done on the part of all the actors involved. Yeah. Well, and uh, also, you know, my my mom was saying, you know, because basically what the the story was was that Gabriel had some sort of infection and it turned to uh, necrotizing colitis, which basically it means that his intestines died. Ooh. And, you know, you you can't come back from that, especially, you know, a preemie that small, you know, the... You know, because they they were asking, you know, is there some sort of surgery that we could do or something? And she's like, you know, he he wouldn't survive. Yeah. And so, you know, and I I thought, you know, one of the things that I really liked 
was uh, the way Britt was through that whole thing because you know she comes out and uh, you know she just she gives them this awful awful news she's you know she but she very carefully explains what's happening and so she's like you know you've got a matter of maybe hours and and he's like there's nothing we can do he's gonna die the only thing we can do is make sure that he's comfortable and you know and sabrina's like yo i want a second opinion and brit's like you know what okay i'll go get another doctor but you know she she was very calm, very professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, she did a, She was amazing. Oh yeah, and and of course, it's all part and parcel of of her line of work. Yeah, you know, well, her particular line of work, in you know, in terms of being a doctor. Yeah. So yeah, and and they even baptized the baby before he died, which which eh, me being not particularly religious. It's kind of meh, it's kind of not necessary, but you know it helps them feel better. So yeah. you know. Well, and and Sabrina, Sabrina's like you know I I you know, little turns to Patrick's like I I know we never talked about religion, and Patrick's like nope go for it. You know, yeah. That you know and and I think at that point you recognize the you know that's that's for Sabrina. You know it doesn't really matter how he feels at that point about anything. You know anything that's going to help Sabrina. Right. And that's and that's fine. That uh, that is more than fine. Oh God. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, to to kind of mood whiplash back a little bit. Uh, news is getting around, you know, with, with the the Corinto circle and, and the Jerome circle about Ava being pregnant. And Morgan, of course, tells Kiki, and Kiki is basically a big old ball of what the fuck. Well, it for. Poor Kiki, she she had an interesting day anyway because earlier in the day, she ran into Franco in the park. Yeah. And Franco, for some reason, has decided to start doing caricatures, even though he apparently can't really do caricatures. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, he's just sitting there hanging out, talking to Kiki. And he's like, you know, I just think you should probably know your mom's probably dead. <laughs> yeah, and, he, he, and of course he couldn't tell everything to Kiki yet, but, but I'm, I'm sure Kiki <laughs> but, will find out eventually. He, but he just kind of drops that bomb on her, and she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you saying my mom is dead? And he's like, and eh, you know, just, just, just <laughs> thought you should know, you know, and yay. And so she calls her mom, and her mom's like, Hi! <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and then and then it's just oh god, <laughs> Franco about as blunt as, as a club. So so that happens, and then like a few hours later, that's when Morgan comes over and tells her that her mother is pregnant, and so she's just <laughs> yes, it's she's like, had an interesting day. Oh yeah, so so now that that how would that work? Okay, let's say that that um. Because cause the baby would be her sibling, due to being, you know, her mom. But what, what, that, that, oh god, it's that's just, a just... good question. So yeah, so if Ava is having Sonny's child, that would make it both Kiki's half sibling, mm-hmm. and if she were to marry Michael, it would also be. Her sibling-in-law. Yeah, like. Uh, just. Yeah. Uh. And, if it, and if and if it's Morgan's, that means <coughs> that it's her half sibling and also her half former stepchild. Uh. Wow. That that's gonna get confusing, but you know. God I, damn. That has been one of those things over the years, though, when it comes to Sonny. Fucker just can't keep it in his pants. That that seriously, I mean I mean he's knocked up Carly. He's knocked up Sam. I'm surprised he hasn't knocked up Sabrina, but give him time. Ah. I mean I, I he I don't well, he's obviously knocked up Alexis. Yeah. Uh he obviously knocked up Olivia at some point. 
you know, and, and just more over the years. He's he's been around. The dude gets around, let me tell you. Yeah. Which then, you know, hey, that's fine, but um Sonny, for crying out loud, pack goddamn condoms. <laughs> I mean I mean you're worse than I am, dude. And I pack condoms wherever you know, whenever I go and I am expecting to have more than just a passing interaction with somebody that I may be attracted to. Because you never know. You know, it's best to be prepared. And Sonny is obviously not prepared. Well, I think the better plan in Sonny's case wouldn't have been pack condoms. It would have been don't fuck Ava. This is true. Fucking dipshit. Yeah, fuck Ava on on AJ's grave, basically. So it's almost... So it almost seems like, oh, yeah, yay, AJ's dead. Let's fuck on his grave. Fuh, 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 fuh. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it looks. But obviously, you know. Oh, Lordy. So we we did have a little bit with Maxie. Yes. And, you know, these, these past couple of weeks where, you know, the date comes up. At first she wasn't going to go, and then she decided she is going to go and not tell Levi at first. So, yeah, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, there was uh, on that uh, general hospital discussion page. There was uh, someone took a poll and was like, "Which character would you like to see just gone?" And there was a chorus of people saying, "Levi, for the love of God, Levi!" And I have to say, I fucking agree because every time he's on screen, I just want to punch him in the face. And it's yeah. and it's it's not because he's vegan. It's because he is a self-righteous, self-centered asshole. Self-centered, self-righteous, and manipulative, too. Yeah. Well, and it was really interesting. And, you know, blessedly, there were, he was only on screen a little bit. But, uh, you know, it was, it was actually kind of interesting because he had this conversation with Mac. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Mac kind of confronted Levi and was like, you know what? Maxie went on, you know, went on this trip to find herself, but she didn't find herself. She found you. And I think that kind of went right over Levi's head. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, and, and, oh, well, yeah, I remember. And he was like, you know, technically you're not Maxie's father. And Mac was basically like, bitch, I will smack you. <laughs> I'm gonna cut. I'll cut you with 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 whatever I have in this thing. I'll cut you with a mac and cheese. Don't you dare imply that I'm not that girl's father just because she's not biologically mine. Yeah, he, mu- he fucking raised her. I remember yeah. watching when Maxie was like a kid, like literally a kid, before she got you know aged. You know she and Georgie when they were little kids, and and you know Mac was nothing but good to them. So, yeah, to say to, – to claim that Mac is not her father, fuck you, Levi. Yeah. Fuck you. And he did he did back off of that real fast, but, I mean, the fact that he even brought it up, I'm like, you're an asshole. Yeah, I, I hope something really, really interesting happens to him. Yes. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, oh. yeah, you know, and uh, it's kind of – like I think what he was doing was kind of awful because basically he convinced Maxie that she shouldn't even try to see her daughter because that would bring up uh, all of that negative energy again or what, yeah. whatever the the line was. Um, and it was Nathan who convinced her, you know, she's your daughter. You know, you're you're doing better. You should try to see your kid. And so um, Maxie, you know, talked to Diane and uh, she had actually missed the appointment where she was supposed to uh, go in and talk to the judge. But uh, Nathan wound up uh, have, you know, just happened to be in the courthouse and offered to come with her when she, you know, went in to try and talk the judge into rescheduling. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing that he did because... Uh, Maxie's like, you know, I want to reschedule the appointment, and the judge is like, how about never? Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> then, <he's> like, <laughs> well, oh, and, yeah. and he, he's like, you know, if you can't be trusted to keep a simple appointment, you can't be trusted with a child. And I'm, you know, and he was about to add six months. 
onto the um, whatever the order was that said Maxie couldn't couldn't see Georgie. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Nathan stepped forward and was like, actually, it was my fault. Uh, she didn't get the, the notice. I accidentally threw it out. Uh, my my bad. And the judge was like, okay, well, then I guess we'll reschedule. Yeah. So Nathan did real damn good there. Yes, he did. And and when they tell Levi about it, he's like, you lied to a judge? That's terrible karma. I don't think you're <laughs> going, I'm going to punch you in the face, first of all. For not having any idea what the fuck karma is, because you shut up. Uh, <laughs> and secondly, for being such an asshole. Like, seriously, she went there to try and make headway towards, you know, being able to see her child. And you're gonna shit on her for that. Yeah, fuck you. not cool, dude. Not fucking cool at all. Oh, but in the meantime. Nathan does, you know, he still has the information from his mom that Nina is alive. Well, I say his mom, but, you know, from yeah. Madeline that Nina is alive. And he's been debating whether or not to tell Silas, even asks Britt, should I tell Silas? And she's like, yeah, fuck yeah, tell him. But then he decides against it because he didn't want to get his hopes up. And then Tuesday rolls around. Yeah. And so does Nina. Mm-hmm. In yeah, a she wheelchair. Should- she shows up at Danny's birthday party, and of course, you knew something was going to happen, because earlier in the day, Silas and Sam had finally said, I love you to each other. So you knew you knew something was going to happen, because yep. no one can be happy in the general hospital universe. Well, they can, but it's just mostly well, temporary. Okay, I was going to say, not for long, anyway. Yeah, and... And, of course, everybody knew Nina was coming because ABC decided to promo the shit out of it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that is one thing about about you know, commer- you know, commercials for American soap operas that I've noticed a lot lately. It probably noticed a lot more is that some of these things, if, if they hadn't – if they had kept it under wraps, like like if, if the actress and the, all the actors and the writers and everybody had kept it under wraps – this would have been a really good surprise. Yeah. If they kept it under goddamn wraps. <laughs> to be fair, Ava being pregnant was a decent surprise. Yes. So they can do it, but I think Nina being you know actually alive and in Port Charles, because they've already established that she is alive. Yeah. They did have her on screen wake up and whisper Silas's name. Before she even came onto the show proper in that wheelchair. Yeah. So, you know, ah, <laughs> it's, it's it's like God damn it, so many so many spoilers going around. It's like, how do you guys enjoy this when you can see all of these goddamn spoilers? I, I mean, know. I try my best to avoid them. I don't always manage to filter filter them all out because inevitably they're gonna hit somewhere because I'm stupid and I look at comment sections. <laughs> Never oh, read the comments. <laughs> yeah. Although, luckily, luckily, I, I just tend to look at, the, you know, wherever I happen to watch it, and then and then that's it. Oh, boy. But, yeah, so Nina is, is alive, and she is in Port Charles. And at first, I was sitting there questioning, okay, how the fuck does she know where Silas is? But, but you know, that got all explained. You know, she they helped her find him. They, you know, they, they used helped the inter- me on... On the the internet, <laughs> yeah, I thought which, that was kind of funny. Which I, I was like, oh yeah, you know, if she if she wasn't put in a coma twenty years ago, she <coughs> wouldn't really know what the internet is, would she? No, she's got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, I mean, goddamn, <laughs> oh, catching up to do with with you know just current events with uh, pop culture and everything. Oh wow. So just just waiting to see how how Nathan reacts and how she reacts to Nathan. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be a joyous reunion. Yeah. He thinks. Well, and and, it, and you know that was one of the first things that Silas wanted to do was like, uh, let's call your brother. And she's like, no, I you know the last time I saw him, he was a little kid. I just I don't want to see him yet. And then like, and then she's like acting all like. A little, a, little, a little bit crazy because she's like, yo, 
uh, you know, basically like, oh, we can just pick up where we left off. Yeah, a little naive there, Nina. Just a little bit. Oh, and and just wait till she finds out that what her that the reason she was in the coma was because of her mother. Yeah, I was wondering if anyone had told her that because I'm like, you know, she's kind of uh, like like she's not asking any questions about why she was in a coma. No, but to be fair, she has been in a coma for 20 years. Spent yeah. a lot of time rehabilitating herself, obviously, to the to where she can at least get around in a wheelchair. Because I mean, you, your your body is in a coma for twenty years. Your 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 muscles and stuff. I, I would imagine they would atrophy after a little while. Yeah. And you would need to rebuild the strength in them. So naturally, okay. You know, she she had more important things to think about. Okay, let's get me let's get me moving. Let's let's get me mobile in some way. Okay, Silas, boom, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then she's introduced. I, I believe, because full disclosure here, I have, you know, we were recording this on a Wednesday, and I have been keeping it current, so... Shame on you. Well, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I believe she was introduced to, uh, I want to say she was introduced to Rafe, you know, by the... Yeah, because what happened was, um, you know, she was, she slept at, uh, in Silas's bed, and Silas slept on the couch because he's like, uh. <laughs> yeah, just a little. He's just a little weirded out. And so uh, the next day, uh, she does meet Rafe and finds out that, uh, uh, you know, he's not Silas's son. He's uh, Silas's nephew, and that Rafe's father is a serial killer and is dead, uh, which is something that she takes like pretty much in stride. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, I mean, he is dead, so it's like, yeah. you know, it's not like she has to worry about him coming to slit her throat or anything. Uh, and then uh, the they left off when um, Kiki showed up, and uh, Silas is like, uh, you know, this is, because she was like, oh, is this another one of Steven's children? And uh, uh, Silas is like, no, this is Kiki, she lives here, and she's actually my daughter, and they left off before, uh, you know, she asked, you know, who Kiki's mother is. Yeah, and, oh boy, wait till she finds out. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, just just a little bit interesting. Because it's one thing to, you know, know that he was cheating. It's quite another to know that he had a child with his mistress. Yeah, and then that coupled with the fact that, well... The reason why she was in a coma was because of her mother trying to take out the baby in her womb. Yeah. Oh God, just just that that's going to be this is going to turn out to be quite fun. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Sam, of course, at first is kind of upset and just kind of you know because obviously because you know things are, things are going so well and then this happens and then and it's, and it's not like she's really. I don't take it as her being like really upset with Silas or even Nina at this no, point. No, she's she she wasn't upset at either of them. She was upset at the situation. And you know, to be fair, Sam was the one who made the choice to say, uh, "Let's not tell Nina quite yet that I'm your girlfriend," because she seems kind of fragile right now. Which, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I, I I'm kind of like you know, there's that, and then there's you know, the longer you hide this the worse it's going to be. But then again, drama! Of course. Um, and so there's that, but I have to say, I, I loved um, Alexis's uh, parenting method at that point, because mm-hmm. <laughs> Alexis's solution to this whole thing is basically to sit down in the park and get Sam drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's a good mother. I, I, I like that. Yeah, although when you're drunk, the words flow a lot more easily. Yeah. You can get it all out there. That's fine and dandy. And it's out there. You, if, if you're the kind of drunk – if you're like me and you're the kind of drunk that remembers shit you've said, then you know what? You'll know what's out there. You, you, you feel relief, and it's fine and dandy. And plus, Alexis is there to make sure Sam doesn't do anything stupid. Yes. Oh, speaking of people doing stupid things, goddammit, Rafe. 
Yeah, what the hell? Because, okay, Rafe has apparently started stealing money because he tried to steal money from Franco, and then he stole money from Sam's wallet, Mm -hmm. and apparently he's buying drugs. Yeah. I I, I guess they're using him to show the effects of the drug dealing, of the drugs being pushed through Port Charles. Oh, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, you're right, because there had... That there hasn't been any this like at least according to Sonny, there haven't been any drug dealers in town before now. But now that there is one, of course Rafe is apparently gonna go buy drugs. I'm just yeah. like I, I and I'm sorry like I think we haven't gotten into like the why of it yet. But I'm sitting here going, Okay, if this is still some sort of reaction to the fact that Molly is with TJ and not with him. I just want to punch him in the face. Because, like, dude, it's, like, I've been watching this show for about a year now. Mm -hmm. And this entire time, Molly has been very clear, I don't want to date you. She has made that clear over over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And if he's still not getting it to the point where he's like, I'm going to drown my sorrows in drugs, I'm just, I have no sympathy left for him. I really don't. It's like, dude, move the fuck on and stop being an idiot. Yeah, there, there have to be, there has to be other teenage girls around Port Charles. We just don't see them. Yeah. You know, have have to be one-off characters or whatever, or, or... Or hell, whatever happened to to uh, what's her name? Um, 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 um Felix's sister, who's oh, name Taylor. I, yeah, whatever the fuck happened to Taylor? Did she just go back to what? What was it, North Carolina or something? I'm I'm assuming that's that's what happened. Is that she just went home? Um, I'm hoping so because I really didn't like the replacement actress they got for her. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, but you know, bring somebody like her back. You know, I, I would, I would mind. I would not mind the character being back if for no other reason than to be there to, to just be like, I guess, for lack of a better term, a morality chain for Rafe, so he doesn't yeah. go off the deep end. And oh my God, so they do, they do take you know their plot lines sometimes from like the the current events or whatever. I mean, we've we've seen some of that with these different things here and there, and. There was the recent shooting at the Santa Barbara shooting. Please uh-huh. tell me they are not going to take Rafe down that route. Oh God, I hope not. Please no. Oh shit. Because he is, I mean, with with the way he's handling his rejection of Molly from Molly, you know, he he he's slowly but surely looking more and more like a douche bro. It, it's, it's, it's just no, no. And keep in mind, his dad was crazy. He was a serial killer who thought he was a vampire. Yeah. He killed Rafe's mother right in front of him with a stake through the fucking heart. <sighs> Fucker be crazy. Yeah. And and just seeing that, even even if it's not genetic, just seeing you know, your mother being murdered by your father, that's that's got to do something to him. Well, that, that's got it. And then, of course, at the time, Molly was a good friend. She was basically his morality chain right there. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he mistook it for something more, and turns out that it's not. And, and, of course, he loses it and turns into a narc, and then he does. He's, he's just. God damn it, Rafe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it makes for good discussion. Obviously, we're discussing it. Or maybe I'm just rambling on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, it uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but it does make for some good discussion, and that's and that's I guess that's where you know hey, it 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 does its job. The writing know, does guess, its job there. I guess I just wish that this particular turn had been a little less out of nowhere, because we didn't see Ray for weeks. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he shows up and he's apparently hooked on uh, generic white powder. Ooh, bad. Yeah, watch, watch him be, watch him be uh, snorting anthrax or something. <laughs> no, he is not Keith Richards. Baking soda. Um, yeah, probably. 
Oh, so... Powdered sugar, that would hurt. Oh, God, ow. Pixie sticks. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 just no. Oh, lordy. Oh, oh. and we, Franco, you know, he's come up a little bit. You know, he and Carly did the discussion thing. They both find out that, you know, the reason why Morgan and Ava broke up is because Sonny boinked her. Thank you, Olivia. Mm-hmm. And Franco, you know, he's he's trying to do his, his thing in the park, you know. He's trying. You know, you know, he, he may not be very good at the caricatures, but he is at least trying. You know, and the more he does it, the better he will get. Mm-hmm. You know, he he is basically being the starving artist at this point. And and it, and it's like I can actually relate to him at this <laughs> point because it's like you know I'm not out on the streets, I'm not on the parks, you know, doing shows or what have you. I'm not recording things right out there on the park benches or whatever that would be kind of weird and the extension cord would be murder <laughs> but but you know it's it's kind of a similar thing i mean i'm putting together these shows you know we're doing these shows and you know i'll, I'll be completely honest it's not been able to bring in much yet i mean it brings in a little but it's not a lot yeah so and and i know i'm far from the only one out there doing this and and in the similar situation so you know to see Franco in that position, I, I can definitely relate to him. Well, at least, though, uh, Olivia hasn't come along and taken all your money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which was like, God damn it, Olivia. I mean, She's I, like, you know what? You destroyed my hotel room. I'm going to take this. <laughs> yeah, which is like... <laughs> and, but, you know, he can't really argue with her because that is exactly... <laughs> he does kind of owe her for that. Yeah, uh, but then Carly not only basically forces him to draw her, and, and it turns out that he drew her and he she looked more like Olivia, yeah. which I thought was weird. But then yeah, she's like, you know what, you know what, I'm kicking you out of the hotel. You're moving the fuck in with me. Yeah, and then it's like, oh shit. <laughs> and I've heard Jocelyn's supposed to be coming back with another actress, so that's gonna be fun. Are they aging her again? We don't know yet. Cause let, yeah, because uh, last time we saw her, she looked, what, about three or four? Yeah, she was a little kid. In, a, in her little uh, corn costume? Yep. And now she'll be coming back, and oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it'd be interesting. Oh, especially when people find out that Franco was living with Carly now. Oh boy. And, and most of the people don't like Franco to begin with. I mean, for I mean, his past is one thing, and then of course you have, well, like, like uh, blah, 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 Ellie. You know, Ellie doesn't like him because you know she was all depressed and and and, and bummed over her her spat with Spinelli, and Franco's like, well, why not just 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 jump off the building? <laughs> I mean, granted, oh, yeah, he was, was. I mean, granted, his his motive his his reasoning behind it was for her to. You know, just kind of get this spark and be like, no, fuck you. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's what he was trying to explain at that point. But, you know, it's still kind of harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's not counting the fact that he was a serial killer. He stalked Jason for a while. You know, that sort of thing. And incidentally, the 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 uh, the character was originated by James Franco, who we all yes, know now is – as as a guy who who what was it within the past month or so, you know, hit on a seventeen year old, and something and, like that, and and at one point probably knew it, because there there is there is a point where you know you hit on somebody, and you don't realize how old they are, and then and it's okay you find out how old they are, and then you stop, if they are not you know of legal consenting age wherever you are. He kept going. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, sorry, dude. Oh, but speaking of things in the past, I do, I do want to share like one thing uh, from that, that I've been kind of nostalgia tripping on. Uh, one, of, one of our most recent shows, we had the Nurses Ball, and brought up Eddie Main, Ned Ashton's uh, stage name for his rock career or whatever. Uh-huh. And he was more prominent back in the '90s. Did a lot of songs, you know, cover songs, original songs with his band, Kurth and Taylor. Um, you know all that good stuff, 
And there was one in particular. If you look up the song, Those Little Things You Do, one of the – on YouTube, one of those will come this, – this, this scene will be one of those that come up. And it's basically the scene where he outs himself to Tracy as moonlighting as a rock star while being the CEO of ELQ. <laughs> and it just starts. He's on the bar, and he just says, yo, mama. And Tracy looks around and has this look on her face the entire time like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> oh, and Edward – Edward Quartermain. Oh, god. I, I know I, – I know he – he, he had died long before we, we even started the show and started watching again. But I remember watching him in the 90s, and, and you, the look he had it the whole time, he was like, yeah, that, that yeah. His Edward had this kind of disapproval thing, and meanwhile, the rest of the quarter means and everybody else is having fun. I bet. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, fuck you guys, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hopefully, Tracy will eventually... Wisen up a little bit more if she hasn't already. I would like to think that she is just playing her stupidity or she is actually in on it, which could be a thing. I I don't know. Mm. Oh, so yeah, I think that I think uh, that should be about everything. This week, this I'm sure. Past. I'm sure there's stuff we forgot, but we can we can cover it <laughs> next time. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> Said that before, and I think I've forgotten things between the weeks. So, yeah, but, it's possible. But we will find out. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys for listening. Um, obviously, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. If we wanted to find Namio on the interwebs and the social medias, where could we find her? Uh, you could find her on uh, Tumblr at uh, Namio's Corner, uh, on Twitter at, uh, at Naomi Washburn, or on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. What? Ah, uh, yes. And, of course, you could find me on the Tumblrs and the Twitters at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And, if you aren't already, you can catch the show on iTunes. Woo. Fuck yeah, iTunes. As long as they don't hiccup, because uh, the day we're recording this is the day uh, the newest Thespian talk went up. And one of my listeners was, was complaining that the file that she got from iTunes was like 23 seconds long. But then I went and go, went to check it later, and it downloaded fine. So I don't know what is up with iTunes on that one. If, I don't know. If they do that, then we'll just have to throw our shoes at them or something. That's uh, plan. Yes. And if you like this show, if you like, if you want to help support me, again, hi, starving artist. <laughs> uh, you know, if you would like to support me through the show, support, you know, for like new equipment, you've probably heard it throughout the show. The microphone could probably use a good upgrade, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X. You know, even just a dollar a month would be a lot of help, especially if a whole bunch of you do it. <laughs> So and, – and again, like I said, new equipment. Uh, I do Let's Plays as well. You know That can go towards getting new games that I can do. In fact, again, day we're recording this, a video uh, – a, a Let's Play of Goat Simulator went up, and that was made possible through Patreon. Cool. So, so I was like, yay. <laughs> uh, and of course, if you want some lovely artwork by a very talented and award-winning artist and animator – then you can check out my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, on Patreon as well at patreon.com slash beckyhop. She's awesome. She is. Oh, my God. You should go check out her stuff. And if you throw down enough money, she will do an animation for you. Woo. So, yes. So with that, thank you guys for listening. We will see you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Namio, signing off. Yay. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.